Hey guys, welcome to another one of my YouTube videos. In this video, I'm gonna show you how I Photoshop wheels onto a car. The car I'm gonna use is a CRX, first generation. I usually like to start by pulling some guidelines out so when I paste the wheel onto the screen, um, I'll use these guides to create a circle to crop the wheel out. Um, this photo I found online is a Volk TE37 on a uh, motorcycle. I thought it was pretty cool. Um, I spent a few minutes online looking for the right angle of wheel to put on here because um, a lot of times when you find a wheel and you start cropping it out it just doesn't look right um, this is not a how-to video this is just me demonstrating how I do this so right here I'm um, pulling the marquee tool out trying to adjust uh, the area of the wheel so I can uh, cut out a piece and use it on on the car I'm gonna get a little bit past the bead because what I'll do is eventually when I paste it back onto the car, I'm gonna kind of race around the edges to help blend it into the tire. So once I copy it uh, and paste it, I get it down onto the car and then try to figure out what's the best position for it. I'll, uh, I'll go through and delete everything that's between the spokes using the marquee tool again um, I'll kind of zoom in here and show you how I do that. Basically just, you know, click around the edge that you want uh, to disappear. And closest, you know, close, closest you get to it is going to depend on, the, the, you know, the quality and how, how it looks. So right here I'm just kind of going around the edge. So just take your time and based on your mouse skills, um, you can kind of click through the edge here and get it get it where you want. Um, I use a mouse. I've never used a uh, the sketch pad or the, the, the pen that, that you can use. Uh, I'm just so used to using the mouse. Probably be better if I did learn how to use the pen. But you know, once you get it completed, you can select the area and then delete uh, what's inside the area. So I kind of would, I, I did this for all the uh, other spaces between the spokes. Um, which brought me to this point where now I have just the wheel by itself. There's no center cap. There's no, um, I can't tell. I think there's lugs on there. Uh, a lot of times I'll go back in and I'll add a center cap or I'll add some lugs. Um, so right now I'll, I'll position the uh, wheel over the t um, existing wheel and kind of eyeball it and see if, if that's where I want. Um, for the background behind the wheel, I'm just going to create a black circle and I'll use the marquee tool again and I'll just pull it uh, holding the, the, the Z, it used to be the shift key, but in this version of Photoshop you have to hold the Z key down and it keeps the portion of the circle uh, round. Then I'll fill it up with black and then kind of pull it, put it behind the wheel like you can see here and then I'll group them together and that way when I move it around they'll be stuck together and you won't, you won't have to move both of them individually. So right now it's getting close. It doesn't look perfect. Um, I'll usually rotate it to kind of see which way looks better. Um, so I'll take a little time here and I'll rotate the wheel to kind of get the best angle that I think looks the best based on the angle of the photo of the car. Um, ideally, it's nice to find a wheel that looks like it's the, cl the, the same perspective, I guess, as the photo of the car that you're working on. Um, a lot of times that doesn't work out that way, but you do your best to try to figure, I mean, to, to try to find a wheel that um, that works. So once I think I've, I've, I've found a good angle, I'll, uh, I'll stop, leave it there, and then I'll go to the next wheel. Um, and sometimes it won't look good right away, but that, that's okay. I'll just uh, come back to it later. Um, right here, I'll, I'll position the, the back wheel. I'm going to do the same thing, put the black dot behind it. Uh, and then group them together. That way I can uh, move them both at once and not uh, individually. So right here, I'm just rotating it, trying to find it, and I think I found it, so there it is. You can still kind of see the edge of the tire uh, from the motorcycle on there, that kind of that highlighted uh, area, and I'm, I'll, I'll, I'll go through and um, 
kind of blend that in and and delete that stuff. So it look, looks pretty good right there. I think I found my angle. The back one might still be a little off, but for what I'm doing, just real quick, it, it uh, looks good. So now what I'm doing is I'm going to copy uh, the top layer of the car up, up up under the wheel wells as close as I can. I'll go back through and delete what I don't get there later and kind of blend that in so you won't you won't be able to see that. A lot of times because it's black in that area, when you delete it and kind of work with it, you can't really tell what was there to begin with. So I'm going to copy it. I'll go through and uh, click on my top layer and then I'll paste it on top of the layer. And it already, you can kind of see how it's going to look. Um, I need to go through there and delete some of that uh, black area that's under the fender wells so you can kind of see it. So right here I'm just adjusting, playing with the height, just seeing how it looks. And then I'll go through and get my marquee tool um, and I'll make a uh, circle that kind of matches the form of the fender well and go through and just try to try to delete it. You can do this with the eraser tool too if you wanted to, but my hand's not that steady and a lot of times I'll start erasing part of the fender and part of the car that I don't want to erase and have to start over. Um, so I like to use the marquee tool and just kind of make it a round shape and kind of delete around that spot. And there's there's probably still some there that you can't see, but because it's the background behind it is black, it blends in real well. And you don't have to worry about that. So now what I want to do is I think I'm going to try to put some shadow uh, over the wheels so it'll give it that more depth effect to make it look like they're supposed to be there. So I'll create a new layer that's behind the body of the car but over the wheels and tires. I'm checking to make sure that I'm in the, in the right spot. And then once I do that, I'll start creating the shadow. Uh, first, I think right now, this is where I'm going to go through and delete the edge, or erase, I should say, the edge of that wheel, uh, or that tire that was in, or on the wheel already to help, help kind of blend it into the, the uh, tires that are on the car now. And as you do that, you can kind of see it just looks like it's part of that tire. Um, you can take a little more time and center the wheel on the on the tire behind a lot a lot better. Again, this is just, I'm just kind of doing a quick little video here to just kind of show you how I do it. Uh, I'm I'm sure there are tons of videos online that explain exactly how they're doing it. Everybody's got their own way of doing things. Photoshop is kind of funny that way. There's a hundred ways to do one thing. Um, so. This, this way I just kind of work with it and it, it kind of blends in and looks looks good. There's a big gap right there behind the rear mud flap that I could probably go back in later and add a black, uh, some black shading to help get rid of that because right now it looks like the car is uh, hollow on that back part. Um, so under the car you can still see where I need to kind of clean up some of the, uh, the image that I copy and pasted originally, but I'll, I'll do that here in a second. Right now, what I'm going to go through is going to go ahead and add the shading to the top of the wheel to help give it some depth to make it look like that the wheel is actually supposed to be on the car and not sticking like uh, outside the car, kind of like they're tucked in a little bit. Uh, I'm clicking through here. This I'm choosing the uh, gradient uh, black to transparent. So when you pull it, the top part is black, and then it just kind of gradiates into a transparent. Um, and I'll just keep doing that until I kind of see a shade that I like to make it look like, uh, like I said, a little realistic, realistic and give it some depth. So you can, uh, help, helps it pull, pull in uh, to the car better so it looks, looks more real. I'm going through and doing the same thing on the back tire. It takes me a little bit sometimes because sometimes you um, pull too much or you don't pull enough. Um, I guess... I could go through and copy the the one I did on the front wheel and then paste it onto the back wheel, but I like to do them individually because it just helps me uh, eyeball it better and give uh, make sure they uh, blend well. So now I'm going to go to that top layer and I'm going to delete that uh, extra um, stuff that's under the, uh, the side panels. And I'll use a eraser and I'll kind of um, use the one with the soft edges. So when you're deleting it, it's a little more smooth. Um, it doesn't have to be perfect. Uh, you can see the, the street under it, and it blends in uh, a whole lot better. 
So, and that's, that's pretty much it. I mean, as far as doing it quick and simple, um, I'm going to go through right here now and I'll play with the uh, shading on the wheels, the contrast and the brightness. I like to use the Legacy because it's a little more deliberate. Uh, the newest version, when you don't use, have, uh, use Legacy selected, uh, it's not as, uh, it's a little more smooth. It doesn't change it as, as uh, harsh as it does when you do use Legacy. So like, like I said, I like to do each one individually. Um, just kind of play with it. Like I said, I'm eyeballing it. And based on your monitors, you can kind of use your own judgment on how it'll look. But for the most part, that looks good. I mean, it's not, there's still some areas and then there I probably need to go in and clean. But uh, that's, that's how I do it.